Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi, I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Age of Apocalypse and focus on the character of X-Man. That back when this character first appeared, I had a little bit of confusion because I thought uh, the story that we got in Age of Apocalypse was actually Cable's Origins. Like, I had no idea, idea that we actually did get prior to this uh, the origins of Cable, that Cyclops and Jean Grey somehow traveled to the future and they brought up their child and defeated Apocalypse. Again, I had no idea about that. And so I thought this was the retelling of Cable's origin story and that somehow he got older and he grew up in the future and then he came back. Time trial is always really confusing. So it took me a long, a long time to realize that this wasn't the situation. So X-Men number one, written by Jeff Loeb. Art by Steve Scrossi, or Scross. I'm not sure if I have to pronounce that last E at the end. So, X-Men is an alternative version of um, Nathan Summers of Cable. In the Age of Apocalypse, his parents are Cyclops and Jean Grey. Uh, they didn't do, they didn't make him the old-fashioned way. He was actually created by Mr. Sinister. While in the 616 universe, uh, Cable is the um, son of Cyclops and Madeline Pryor. Madeline Pryor was uh, Jean Grey's clone. So they're pretty much the same person. Basically, X-Men is Cable without having to deal with the techno-organic virus. He would be insanely powerful and one of the most powerful characters within the Marvel Universe. So we have sort of like a retelling of how X-Men escaped from... Um, Mr. Sinister's lab that he was actually liberated by Age of Apocalypse Cyclops that he was so awesome even though he was missing an eye he was really cool I love the design he was working with Apocalypse he was one of Apocalypse enforcers but he was always really reluctant and always under the table would try to help and try to do good so man had escaped Sinister's control now he's uh, under the tutelage of Forge in this particular situation, that's pretty convenient of a retelling of what had gone down in the Age of Apocalypse and a little bit about X-Men's past. He's sort of like having visions of stuff that went down and he's, he's explaining them to Forge. So within Forge's group, we have Age of Apocalypse Toad, Mastermind. Most people with telepathic powers, for some reason, Apocalypse obviously must have thought these guys are a threat had their telepathic part of their mind removed, so they don't have their powers, be it Mastermind or be it the White Queen. Grey and Jean Grey are like very few characters that still have mental powers. Seron, and we have, I thought this guy was Blob, but actually this guy is Sunder. Uh, he's called Brute here, but I think he's the dude that used to run around with the Morlocks. Ford's in his company, roam around the country, especially the parts that are not, a, are not as controlled at, um, by Apocalypse. They have like this traveling circus type of thing and theater with them. They're trying to keep a low profile. And Ford tells X-Men not to use his powers because if his powers flare up, they're going to call the attention of Apoc Apocalypse and trouble's not going to be far behind. Um, this is the case when X-Men used his powers, they flared up. Shadow King notices his presence. So Apocalypse sends Domino, H of Apocalypse Domino, that looks so freaking awesome to capture X-Men. Obviously, that's a sort of cool angle because in the 616 universe, Cable and Domino, Domino sorry, are um, allies in combat. And I think, I'm pretty sure they had a relationship that it was sort of complicated. Forge's crew on the side will help humans, try to help them get liberated, try to get infinities uh, from going full on genocide on them. So obviously they are good guys. Sort of see, it's sort of cool to see Saron being a good guy that you don't get to see that very often at all. But the cool thing is to see how X-Men was super crazy powerful. He just blasts away an infinity with a blink of an eye. So, again, going back to me thinking that X-Men was Cable, uh, I was like sort of baffled. I didn't understand why he didn't have his technical organic arm, what was the deal, when he would get it, how the timelines would align after the Age of Apocalypse. After rescuing Siren, they rescue another guy. Well, actually, he joins the um, 
for this crew, which obviously it's Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister is the creator of X-Men. He wants to keep close tabs on his ultimate weapon. He wants to, he, his idea is to use X-Men as a weapon to take down Apocalypse once and for all. Very In a very similar way that uh, how um, Sinister in the main Marvel Universe um, made sure that uh, Cable came to be. He made sure that Scott Summers um, had a kid with Jean Grey. Eric Child Cable was infected by the techno-organic virus, so his whole plan went to shit. So, I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys... like. X-Men was a really awesome title. Uh, sometimes it lacked a little bit of direction. They didn't know what to do with the character. But he was super cool. And um, the character made a comeback uh, pretty, re pretty recently. I have no idea what went down. I think he was a bad guy during that story. I really want to get my hands on that. So see you guys next time. Bye.